Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well today we're going to show you A, how to add your secondary menu up here and B, how to space things out, move things around to where you want them. I've got to do a little bit of coding for this today, but it's really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to reset this so we've got no menu up there. Okay, well I've reset this now so we've got no secondary menu up there, which is the default way it is when you begin. To actually add your secondary menu, you need to go down to your dashboard. Once at the dashboard, go down to appearance and menus. And if you've not got one created, you can create a new menu up here to have on your secondary menu. I've got plenty of menus here. I'm going to select one. I'm going to use this one called OPS right here. Hit this select and it brings it up down here. I already had it up. And all you need to do to get it to show up on the secondary menu is go down, check the little box down here that says secondary menu. Once you've done that, we'll save the menu. It says OPS has been updated. Let's go back to our site and refresh. And as you can see, once we refresh, it's popped our little menu up here. And we've got our little secondary bar. To change the color of that background and to do everything else with the secondary background, again, you need to go down to your dashboard. Once at the dashboard, again to appearance, and we'll go to customize this time. That's going to bring us to this page here. If we go down, we can go to header and navigation. And we got our secondary menu bar right there. Click on it. You can set the text size, letter spacing, default fonts, font styles, background color. If you want to change it to a different color, it changes the color up there. Once you're happy, hit the publish. I'm going to put mine back to how it was, which was 333, the color I had, I think. There we go. Great. Like I say, when you're happy, you've got text color down below. You've got drop down menu background color if you've got one and drop down menu text color. So when you're happy, hit the publish. Now if we go back, you've got options to add elements such as telephone, email, and social media icons. Still in the header and navigation, if we look down, we've got header elements down here. You can choose to show social icons, and I'll show you where to set those up. Put your telephone number in. As you can see, it's popped the telephone number in there. Put your email in if that's what you want to do. As you can see, it's popped that beside it right there. And if you want to show social icons, simply check the box to show social icons. Now you may see this horizontal bar pop up here. It's just giving you an option here in the customizer that will not be there once we get out of the header elements. So once you're happy, hit publish. And we can go back. Now if I go to the page and refresh, we've got our telephone number, email, and social media icons right there. Now these social media icons, you can set them up. It's pretty limited in the secondary menu, but to set them up, again, go down to your dashboard. Once at the dashboard, go down to Divi and Theme Options. It's going to bring you to here under the General tab. If we roll down, this is where you can put your Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Put your URLs in there to make them show up. That's pretty limited. You can actually edit, I believe it's the functions PHP, and add more if you want to. We've done that in previous videos. It's not really recommended unless you're using a child theme because it'll be overwritten on the next update. If you really want to add more, I would suggest creating an actual custom global header. Once you've added your social medias, make sure to go up at the top, save the changes until you get a nice little check mark like that. Great. Let's go back over to our customizer. I've got two instances open. I don't need that. Let's just refresh this page. And there we have it. And that's a pretty standard setup. But what if you perhaps wanted this on the left and this 
on the right hand side. Well, if we inspect this, I'm using Google Chrome, but most browsers nowadays have this tool. I'm going to right click and inspect. And if we roll up, as we're rolling up, it's highlighting what we've got there. And it's the ET secondary menu right there. If I click on it, it's telling us it's floating to the right. So if I change this to float left, it's now pushed it over and it's buffered up against our social medias and things over there. So if I want to put this part on the right, right click and inspect this part. And if we roll up, want the whole thing, there it is, ET info, if I select it. We look here, it's got ET info float left. If I change that left now to a right, we've now got the menu on the left and the social media icons on the right. And for me, that works really nicely. Now I kind of like to have these stretched out, so they're taking up more of the available space here. So to do that, I'm going to reinspect this. Back to our ET info. There's our float right over there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down and add a couple of little more lines of code. I'm going to give it a bigger width because if I actually hover over it, you can see it's not really wide. I'm going to tell it perhaps to be 60% of our screen on desktop. So I'm going to say width, 60%. That's great. It's kind of popped it in the middle there, which is fantastic. But if I hover over it again, you can see it's taking up a lot more space there. Now you can up it or down it if you want it wider. I also kind of want them to be a bit sp more spread out. If I was to refresh this page now, this would all go back to how it was. This is not permanent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this that we've just modified here, ET info with the hashtag all the way down to the closing curly bracket there. Control C to copy. I'm going to roll down to our additional CSS panel. And anything that's there, I'm going to scoot down. I'm going to give mine a title. Titles are forward slash star star forward slash. Anything that you write in between the two stars will not be read as code. Great place for titles or notes. So, secondary menu. I want to drop down and I'm going to paste that bit of code in there. And I'm going to go back to our other part right here. which is our ET secondary menu. And we just had that floating left. I'm going to copy that part. Control C. I'm going to drop down. And I'm going to pop that in there just like that. And I'm going to hit the publish button. And that's going to make that permanent. But I really want to spread this out throughout the available space here. So I'm going to add a couple more lines of code here. I'm going to say display flex. Just tidy that up. And I want to justify the content space between so it spreads it out with equal space in between that all. So I'm going to say justify dash content colon and I'm going to say space dash between. As you can see, that's now spread that out throughout the available space there, which looks a lot tidier to me. It's not quite as cluttered. Put a little semicolon on the end of there just in case we want to add some more code. Great, well that's going to work on desktop. Let's make sure we publish. We'll go back to our regular page here now. And if I refresh this page, it should look like our customizer. There it is, fantastic. Well that works for desktop, but let's check it on tablet and mobile. Again, I'm using Google Chrome with the inspector tools. I'm going to hit F12. I'm going to get my little responsive toggle up. Here it is on a iPhone 12. And yeah, the numbers all squashed up, the mails, that's okay. We're missing our social icons. By default, it actually hides the social icons on mobile, but we can fix that if you want to show those and hide something else if you want to. We'll do that in a moment. Let's have a look on a tablet. 
again that's okay that's actually working fine but it's just taking up sort of 60 percent of that space i'd like it to take up all of the available space so what we can do with this is add what they call media queries and have different settings for tablet and mobile. I happen to know the tablet breakpoint is 980 I believe where it turns into a hamburger menu there and the reason you can't see the menu right here is because it adds it to our regular drop down here it's just added it on the bottom of our regular menu which works perfectly. So let's go back into our customizer. I'm going to add a couple more lines of code. I'm going to add what they call a media query, which is at media. I'm going to oops around brackets. I'm going to say max width, max dash width. And I'll say 980 pixels. I decided, wasn't it? 980 pixels. We need to open and close some more curly brackets. And inside those curly brackets, we can tell it what we want to do. Well, if we look up here, that ET info, we gave it a width of 60%. So let's copy that. And in between these curly brackets, I want to put that ET info, open its own set of curly brackets. And inside, I'm going to say width 100%. 100%. It's going to take up all of the available space there and it's got a semicolon on it. So if we publish that, go back to our little page now and refresh. This, let's make it a little bit bigger so we can see it better. This should now spread itself out throughout all of it. So let's do that. We got your number, your email and your social media equally spread throughout our 100% there. Fantastic. Well, let's check it on phone, iPhone 12. Well, that works fine because like I say, it's actually hiding by default the social media buttons on the phone. Now, if you prefer to have your number, it's probably a good idea to have your number on there for the phone they can tap on it and call. So I'd probably hide the email and perhaps have the social media if that's what you wanna do. If not, you're good to go at this point. So if I take this off, well in fact let's just go over to our customizer again. So we'll go back over here and let's write some more code. I'm going to do a different one. Because these hide I think on 767. So I'm going to copy, let's copy this whole thing. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to say 767. And let's get the class name for this one. It's our social icons there. And if we look over here, it's actually telling us that the media query 767 is displaying none. So I want them to display block. Just take that toggle off. I can put the correct ID and class name in there. I want to have this display block. Display block, which means it will be visible. We're overriding a style, so I've got to use the important, which is exclamation mark important. Don't like to use that unless I have to, but sometimes you have to. That's great. So this is going to display our social media icons on the mobile there and on the tablet but I actually want to hide the email so if I inspect that and we get the class name for that one it's an hashtag ET info email right there so I can drop down make sure you don't cut off that last curly bracket because all of our code here is encapsulated in curly brackets from the media query up there. So I'm going to drop down, I'm going to put it the new ID up there, open and close some more curly brackets. And I'm going to say display none. Let's publish. 
And if we go back over to our site now and refresh, here we are on the actual iPad Air. Let's make it a bit bigger so you can see better. Everything's displaying your social media, email and phone there. If we flip to a phone, we should just have phone number and social media icons. So let's go to iPhone 12. And there it is. We've got our phone number and our social media icons. And obviously display or hide whatever it is you choose to on yours. But that would be my choice for best on mobile. And of course, if we go back to the desktop version, to get rid of this we've got our menu on the left telephone number email and social media spread out throughout the available area there so there you go guys there's how to add a secondary menu and hide and show things on mobile devices and basically put things where you want them rather than where Divi puts them initially I'll put this code down below for anybody that wants to copy and paste just use the bits that you want to use and edit it, manipulate it to make it your own. And don't forget, just copy and paste it into your customizer, change it how you need to. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a demo video. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.